Good morning. Today we are going to be changing out rear brakes, uh, the rotors and the pads on a 2009 Volvo S60 2.5T. I'll take you through a walk around uh, and an install, a quick install, um, what all is needed and things like that. First things first, before you get started on the car, make sure you're wearing something that you don't mind getting dirty. I really don't want to get this dirty. So first thing we're going to do is change into something a little bit more appropriate. Okay, we're back. I've changed shirts into something that I use uh, just for painting and doing work and stuff like that so I don't have to worry about it getting messed up. I have the car up on jack stands already. I have my jack on the side that I'm working on as an extra precaution. I have uh, chocks. Uh, just some blocks in front of the front tire so the vehicle doesn't roll. I'm on a f kind of a level concrete service. Uh, and because I have to compress the uh, piston in the brakes um, cylinder, I also have the top off of my uh, brake reservoir, brake fluid reservoir, and made sure I've got enough room for liquid to rise up in that because when I press that cylinder in it's going to push that fluid back into the uh, brake reservoir and if it's over if it's too full already then it's going to overflow um, you can take some out if you need to one of the easiest things to use to take it out is just one of those little syringes that you can get for uh, like at a feed store for um, animals uh, for vaccinating animals um, we're going to go ahead and get started what I'm going to be putting on today is something new for me, haven't seen these before, or I've seen them, I've been watching, but I haven't tried them before. From Max Brakes, I've got uh, ceramic pads, um, and I've got an unboxing video that I put together for these two. They look like pretty good pads. Um, I like the ceramics because I don't like brake dust, and the ceramics um, are really good at keeping the dust down. Since it wasn't much extra, I went ahead and got slotted and cross-drilled rotors as well. These are, they look to be nickel-plated. i got to look again. I think that's what that is, is nickel-plated. Um, so out of the box, there is no oil residue on this, nothing to clean off. So you can take them and put them on just like they are without any cleaning. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start taking the tire off. I've already loosened the lug nuts, and we'll get back to you in a little bit. While you've got the tires off, it's a good idea to get this corrosion off the rim of the tires. Yeah. Okay, when the, we've got the tire off. Uh, I've already checked everything else here. Everything else looks like it's in pretty good shape. So, let's get started. What I'm going to do first is pop this clip. Pop that off. And that just clips back on like this underneath these two tabs and in these holes. So you want to remember that position. Next thing we're going to do is back on the back, this is a 10 millimeter or a 7 millimeter. Um, what am I trying to say? 7 millimeter hex and it has, there we go, some little caps that are on there to keep gunk from getting up inside and you got to pull those out. Set those off to the side and then, okay, we're taking out those uh, bolts that are holding the caliper in. I got that one started good, so let me get the other one. Okay, I've got those loosened up. One of the easiest ways to get this out is just to kind of twist this a little bit, and it compresses your piston enough so that this will pull right off. These are the bolts that I was just um, removing. While I'm doing this, I'm going to hand these to Cassie, see all the gunk on them. These need to be sprayed down with some brake cleaner and cleaned off so that they can slide. Your uh, your piston actually can slide on those easily. 
So I'll have her take care of that while I work on the rest. And uh, while I've got this here, I'm going to go ahead and finish compressing the uh, piston too. Hand those to you, Cass, and I'll give you instructions on what to do in just a second. Now, I happen to have this, which I absolutely love. It's a brake cat pad tool made just for this. You keep one of the pads on and this plate backs up against there. It's only a few bucks. I mean, I think I paid like six or seven bucks for this thing. And I can never find my channel locks or a C-clamp that fits around there. So this is a universal thing. It works really well. Just push until it stops. Take it off. And I'm done. And I'm going to set this aside. I don't want it hanging, but thankfully this is set so that it'll go right there on that spring and stay perfectly out of the way. Next thing we're going to do is I need a 10 millimeter wrench or socket, and there's a retainer right here. I've got to take that off. Let me get that for you, and I'll come right back. Yeah. Okay, got my 10 millimeter wrench. This needs to come off. I've already loosened it. It's really easy to loosen. So all you got to do is take that out, set that aside so you don't lose that. And I got a little bit ahead of myself because I also have to remove these. And I think that's either a 15 or a 17 millimeter. Uh, let me try my 15. And I may be wrong on both counts there. So let me find my wrench that fits and I'll get back to you on that too. This is what my dad told Cassie to do with the bolts. To clean them. So this is just how you're gonna clean them. Yeah. You can take just what we're doing is taking a couple paper plates. Just gonna spray it. If I can spray it, and then just take the wire brush and scrub it down. Oh, there we go. Just take the that wire brake brush cleaner kind of evaporates, so you don't really have to do much with it. Just scrub it down. I think that's good. Yeah, basically that's how you're going to clean these little things off. Okay, we have this off. This is your, like your caliper retaining bracket. Got my bolt set aside. And this is important to clean also. This sits in there like this. Your brake pads can slide in these grooves right here. And you can see you, you get uh, stuff with crud built up in there. So this you want to do just the same as you did with the pins. You want to take, uh, spray them down good and get all the gunk out. These are not real bad at all, so they won't take much to clean up. And it really does help make everything work like it was supposed to from the factory. So from here, just a tap and I'll be able to get the rotor off. Pitch that up. Off to the side. Okay, if you saw me having a little bit of trouble there getting this off, on the inside edge of this is your emergency brake. When you pull your emergency brake, this compresses out into this inside ring and sometimes you can get a lip on that. So you just gotta work your way past that. Make sure all these are in good shape. The, the pads here have good meat on them uh, and everything looks good. My uh, hub here turns nicely. There's no slack or play in it. So now it's time to grab my new rotor and put that on. Okay, we're going ahead and mounting our new rotor in place. Shiny. Uh, Huh? Shiny. Yeah, it's very shiny. There we go. Gotta find that hole. Find 
for my retaining bolt. I need a thin screwdriver or something to get that thing. Oh, maybe I put it into place. There we go. I was about to say, you could use the, if you need a thin screwdriver, you could use the mini one I gave you for Christmas last year. Yep, I sure could. Now, that doesn't have to be on there super tight. Just needs to hold it into position. I'm sorry if I'm sweating all over the place. I am sweating. It is about to rain. The wind is relatively calm, and it's extremely humid out here today. So, I'd like to get this done as quickly as possible. You turn it a little bit to see if it's okay. good. Now, Cassie ran off with my other part. Okay, um, before I put this back on, I'm going to do a couple of things. Right here, where this um, slide is, where Cassie cleaned those out, I'm going to put a little bit of high temp grease in there. Not much, I'm just going to put just a little bit. So, those pads, if they need to slide, around on there are able to. You don't want to put much, just a little bit of a film. Um, we're not trying to, you know, lubricate an axle or something here. We're just trying to give this uh, easier spot to slide around on if it needs to move around. Okay, just a little bit, that's all we got. Okay, now we'll remount this. And uh, I'll get back to you in a couple minutes. Okay. okay. I got my caliper mounting bracket back on. Another thing I want to do is just a little bit of grease on these pins as well so that it slides. I can grease that, put it back in. The other one. Don't need a whole lot, you don't want to saturate it. It's going to give it the ability to slide in there nice and easy. Okay, now grab your brake pads. You've got one that is blank on the back and one that uh, has this little retainer clip. This slides into the caliper to hold it into position. And I have my brake lubricant. What we're going to want to do is tear that where it says tear here and put, that's Alex sneezing, put a nice little bit on any of these surfaces where the pad slides, especially like uh, on these tabs. Don't need a huge amount of it on there but I do like to put some on the retainer and this backing plate here. And let's move that out so that if your brake tries to vibrate as you're stopping, this will make it uh, prevent it from chattering. So this, be careful not to get grease on your brake pad either. Just pops right in there like so I'm just gonna set that back off to the side for a second and then get my other one and do the same thing with it a little grease on that and a tang And then that backing plate. And I'll set that there for a second so I can wipe all the grease off my. This, I've seen people take this and try to sit it in your, um, your caliper and try to hold it in position. Actually, that's the hard way to do it. Just take it and slide it right in here up against your rotor and it'll hold itself there quite nicely and then I can just 
do that. Look how easy that is. Now I just get the, my uh, bolts to hold the caliper in place and uh, tighten those back down. And I want to wipe down the rotor, make sure I don't have any residue or anything on the rotor. And then I can put the tire back on and we're good to go. Okay, I'll uh, get back to you in just a uh, couple minutes here. Putting the tire back on. Yep, putting the tire back on. And then uh, we can move around to the other side, do the same thing on the other side, and then we are all set. The one thing I never did like about the Volvos is they don't have uh, uh, anything to key the tire to, so getting it on there and centered is a bit of a pain sometimes. Once you're started, you're good to go though. All right, see you in a few. We are back. I'm, as you can see, taking the tire back off. I'm trying to beat the rain here because the rain's starting to look like it's going to come down within the next half hour. And I'm getting ahead of myself and I forgot two things. Make sure you take the time, this is a good lesson, to do this the right way. I forgot to put my little uh, rubber caps back on for my uh, the heads of those 7mm uh, pins. And I forgot to put my retaining clip in for that outside pad. So take your time. Don't get in too big of a hurry. Just move that back for a second. I'll sit on it. Uh, grab me one of those little pliers or uh, screwdrivers on the other side, Cass. The side of the car. Okay. The caps pop back in place really easy. Like this? Retaining clip. Just goes like this. Like this or smaller? And then, yeah, pop it down there. Cassie, hold the tire. Tap it in to make sure it's in place good. There, that's all. I only forgot a couple little things, but you don't want to forget anything. Now I'll put my tire back on and move to the other side. As I'm uh, tightening my lug nuts here, there are two things that you want to remember to do. Three if you used uh, wheel stops before you just get off and or get in the car and take off. Uh, one, remove your wheel stops. Two, put the cap back on your brake fluid and check the level. And three, pump the brakes several times before you try to just start off. Because we've pressed those pistons in, we've got to push them back out to get the right fit. So pump your brakes a few times before you take off. Other than that, that's changing the brakes out on the rear of a 2009 Volvo S60 2.5T. Um, we'll let these wear in a week or two, and then we'll change out the front brake pads, and we'll uh, see you guys then. Talk to you later.